Hey, yo, what's up everybody? Thanks for swinging by to check out the NoobTube Moto channel. So as the description suggests, today we're going to uh, take some time to chat about the five things that I don't think people on YouTube or the dealerships are telling you about the 2023 CF Moto 450SS that I have here with me now. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about on the list today is going to be just the overall parts availability for this bike. So as most people watching this video likely know, this bike is brand new to the market, right? I believe it was released overseas within the last year or so, and very recently came over into the United States. Um, I acquired my bike in April, and as far as I'm aware, April is probably about the earliest that anybody was actually able to get their hands on this bike and own it. Um, over the last several months, I've obviously dove into a lot of different things, had a lot of conversations, have met and had some conversations with uh, the parts people at my local dealership specifically. And something that we've all noticed is that the availability of certain or a lot of parts is slim to none. So think about when you need to do your oil change or as regular maintenance, especially that first one, right? You get through that break-in period, that first five or 600 miles or so comes around pretty quickly. Unless you uh, kind of plan ahead a little bit, when it comes time to doing that oil change and you want a CF Moto factory oil filter for this bike, you might have a little bit of a hard time finding one. So I was lucky enough to find a website, cfmotousaparts.com. Uh, they have been excellent. I've communicated with them via email a little bit. I highly encourage you checking out their website. It may be a little tedious and a little difficult to navigate initially, uh, but I promise you they have the information that you need. They have the parts on the website. Uh, they are an excellent company to work with, so I highly encourage you to check them out. They do not sponsor me or this video in any way. I just have really enjoyed uh, the conversations that I've had with them personally and the work that they've, uh, or the efforts I should say, that they've put into getting me the products that I've ordered. Um, so I was able to find an oil filter through them and they were able to get to that to me uh, pretty quickly. However, I've had conversation with a lot of owners of this bike and I've also had conversations with my parts people at my local dealerships and they are not or have not been able to get the CF Moto factory oil filters for this bike very quickly. There tends to be a two to three week turnaround time at minimum. I ordered three oil filters from my local dealership over a month ago and they have not come in yet. So one thing to think about, right, is planning ahead for your maintenance related things, no problem. Hey, I know I'm gonna need to do some oil changes let's go ahead and order a couple filters and have those handy so you don't have to worry about it. However, it's not just the oil filters, right? That's just kind of the first thing you think about. Parts in general, right? If you check out that website that I mentioned earlier, you can scroll through. If they have something in stock, it will typically advertise it as in stock so that it can ship right away. If it does not, or if they do not have that item in stock, you would notice it would say typically ships within two to three weeks, which would obviously identify that that item is not readily available to ship right when you order it. Um, if you scroll through and you look through a lot of the different parts, a majority of the parts for this bike are going to be advertised as typically ships within two to three weeks, meaning that they probably have to order those parts from CF Moto directly, wait for them to come in and then ship them out to you. From the conversations that I've had with my dealer, it's exactly the same way. I've ordered some decals and some little parts here and there from them that they were able to get rather quickly, but I've also ordered some things from them probably about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, like I mentioned with that oil filter, that still have not come in. So when you compare that to the Ninja 400 and all of the other high, um, high sought after, or highly purchased Japanese motorcycles, those bikes tend to have more availability when it comes to their parts. 
That's not always the case. I personally know some people that have Japanese bikes that there are some wait times on certain more unique parts. Um, but oil filters and some of your more basic things tend to be more readily available. So again, this was not a deal breaker for me in any way, but I definitely think it's something worth noting and something to be aware of if you plan on purchasing a 450 SS or really any bike in the CF Moto family. All right, so next up on the list, similar to the last item, is uh, not necessarily parts availability, but more aftermarket support. So if you are like me, which I'm sure a lot of you are, you're gonna buy this bike and you're going to want to customize it. You're gonna wanna make it your own. You're gonna wanna make it look unique, feel unique, and kind of be able to represent you and your personality through this bike. Obviously, right, with big brand names like Honda, Yamaha, uh, Kawasaki, you can go on any website and find parts for those bikes, right? You have the big brand companies out there like Man in the Box and Revzilla and all that. Um, you have some smaller companies. You also have things like Amazon, eBay, et cetera, et cetera, where you can literally go in there, you can type in Ninja 400 or whatever bike you have of those big, uh, typical Japanese companies, and you can just scroll for hours of the parts of, that are available for that bike that are aftermarket, from anything from pegs and grips to uh, exhaust systems and mirrors and everything, right, imaginable. I don't necessarily need to dive uh, down that rabbit hole, but you know what I mean. With the CF Moto 450 SS, you will quickly realize that that is not the case. If you go on a lot of those US based companies, uh, CF Moto is not even going to be a clickable option in the manufacturer of the bike that you're shopping for. Um, what I've noticed is that is causing me uh, specifically to have to navigate and do more of my browsing and shopping. Uh, through eBay and more specifically actually through Ally Express. Um, I will be completely honest, this was the first this was the first experience that I had with Ally Express after owning this bike. I've never used Ally Express for anything before. I've never felt like I needed to. Um, but again, right, like shopping for some aftermarket stuff to make this bike a little bit more unique just wasn't happening with the typical websites. Um, and for the most part, I have been fairly happy. Um, obviously, there's typically about a two-week turnaround time to get things. Everything that you order from Ally Express is going to be coming from overseas, so it does have to go through that long customs process. Uh, but the parts that I've received have been surprisingly quality. Um, so, you know, I'll have other videos that you can check out down the road, but if you look through my bike, you'll see things like my SEM speed adjustable levers. I have a spent, uh, SEM speed uh, front brake reservoir cap. I have a see-through uh, front sprocket cover um, and just some other odds and end things. You know, I have a steering dampener. Almost everything that I've ordered for this bike has come from Ally Express. And of those things, I would say that there's been a very few amount of them. Um, yeah, probably just a couple that were a little disappointing and things that I just ultimately didn't end up using, which, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. The, the prices typically justify that. You know, some things are very cheap. Some things are a little bit more expensive. And I did find that when I'm spending 30 40 or $50 on something from Ally Express, uh, those tend to be the things that are surprisingly good in quality. Um, so, again, to me not necessarily a deal breaker, um, but it is challenging, especially because I like to have quality parts, right? On my old bike, I was somebody that would always order kind of the best of the best, right? Like I had ASV levers and name brand this and name brand that. Um, and it was just the things I like to do, right? I like to be able to buy those quality parts for my bike. And I'm hopeful that CF Moto and more specifically the 450 SS will get to that point in the near future. 
this bike is growing very quickly in popularity. Uh, so hopefully that will allow some of these manufacturers of the parts that we all see and like to start making things but we won't know until that happens. So as I mentioned, aftermarket availability currently is very scarce. So make that a top factor in your pros and cons list when you're going into making a purchase. If you know for a fact that you're somebody that wants to have availability for aftermarket things, um, consider buying another bike because right now right like even finding an exhaust system for this bike that is made specifically for this bike almost doesn't happen i found a, a u.s or excuse me an australian based company i believe their name was varix if i remember correctly um, they've just produced an, uh, an a slip-on for the bike i haven't found any full kits yet um, and that is specifically designed for this bike uh, but coming in at a price of about $500 plus shipping to the United States, I am not comfortable with spending that money without having any kind of reviews for it. Um, and that's just one example, right? There are things left and right where it's just difficult to come across some aftermarket support for this bike. Um, so yeah, so again, like I said, for me, not really a deal breaker, but it is a hard pill to swallow sometimes. So I think it's something that all of you should take into account as well. All right, so we've talked about two things. On to the next thing on the list. And this uh, is a pretty a pretty big one to me, really. So I, again, am somebody who likes to do things to my own bikes, cars, home projects, whatever. I guess you could say I'm a DIYer, right? I like to do it yourself. Uh, and I'm sure many of the folks watching this video are gonna be the same. There's also going to be plenty of people that like to take their bikes to shops and to dealers and that is totally fine trust me everybody will laugh and make fun of you and call them stealer ships well they are uh, but at the end of the day if you take your bikes there you typically know that you're getting quality work right the people that are working on your bike do it for a living they tend to be pretty good at what they're doing and you can feel a little bit more confident knowing that everything is being done properly However, for those of you that may be like me and you like to tackle those projects and do it yourself, the support for DIY uh, tutorials, I'll call them, is not there for this bike. Um, again, right, it circles back to this being a brand new bike to this market. <clears throat> With that comes the lack of folks making content and doing things to this bike and videoing it to share with all of you. So some examples, right? When you go to do an oil change, obviously an oil change to me, pretty self-explanatory. It's the exact same concept for any machine that you're working on, whether it's a lawnmower, a motorcycle, a car, a truck, whatever, right? You, you lift the, the machine up in the air, you crack open the, uh, the plug, you drain the oil, you change the filter, it's all the same, right? Most of us have the, the capability of changing your oil without an instructional video. But, I mean, to be completely honest, we know that there are instructional videos out there for how to change the oil on a Ninja 400, a Honda CBR 500R. I guarantee it, there are instructional videos out there for those exact bikes. So people that own those bikes can go on YouTube they can see their exact model and they can watch somebody doing an oil change and know exactly where each nut and bolt is, how to lift the bike properly, how to change the oil filter, where the oil is put back into the bike, so on and so forth. With this bike, you're not going to get that. And again, right, just changing the oil was just kind of an easy example. You could say that about everything. Tightening the chain taking the wheels off, uh, adjusting the brake levers or the, the shift lever, um, adjusting the gear changer tension, um, I don't know, replacing the mirrors. <laughs> you can literally think of anything, right? Anything that you might need to or want to do to this bike, you are going to have to figure it out yourself pretty much. 
Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure more content will probably become more readily available. I actually personally posted a video of how to eliminate the slack in the throttle on this bike. Um, so if you haven't seen that and you're interested, go check that out. But that content isn't as readily available yet for this bike and again for a lot of other CF Moto motorcycles as it is for the more common bikes. So I think that this could potentially be a deal breaker for some people. If you are somebody that enjoys tinkering on your own stuff but you need that confidence of somebody kind of walking you and guiding you through it, then you really, really want to take a step back and reconsider whether this is going to be the most appropriate bike for you right now. Um, again, hopefully that will continue to grow as this bike becomes more and more popular. People will have more of that DIY instructional stuff on YouTube and on other platforms for you to check out. But for right now, it's just not there. So you just have to take your time, figure things out on your own, and be confident. You know, trust that you can get through it. You can always refer to other videos for things like, you know, your your chains, for example, or changing grips or adjusting your levers. For a lot of those simple, silly things, it's gonna be pretty much the same across a lot of different bikes. So maybe you can kind of cross compare how did they do it on a Ninja 400? I can go ahead and take that information and try doing that on my, my 450 SS and see if it works. But again, go into this confident, but also have a backup plan. If you decide to do some of this DIY stuff and something doesn't go the way that you intended it to go, I recently had this bike apart myself, front wheel completely off, back wheel completely off, a lot of the fairings off, um, and you know, Putting that bike back together, I ran into a couple little hiccups with how things were properly supposed to go back on. Some of the bearings, some of the spacers, some of the stuff like that. Um, some of the brakes set up on how the, um, the little clips on the brakes are, are positioned on there. And I didn't have anywhere to go to look up how is this supposed to go on here, right? I had to kind of go old school and go back and refer to some diagrams that I found online to see a map of how the parts went on there. Because again, just no availability, no YouTube video or anything like that to show me exactly how step by step to do it. So again, just gotta take your time, be confident in yourself. But as I mentioned, DIY tutorial videos not currently available out there so really take this into consideration if you're interested in a CF Moto 450 SS. All right, so the next thing on the list is the owner's manual for this bike. Um, it's not the worst, at least it comes with one. <laughs> Uh, it gives you a lot of information in here, but in comparison to a lot of other own your owner's manuals that I've seen for motorcycles and other vehicles, this owner's manual is a little lacking. Um, again, it's got the information, right? Let's just find something in here. Um, so the cooling system, right? Page 108 talks about the coolant. So if we scroll to 108 and we read through the coolant, on this, this page, it basically just gives you an explanation of what coolant is. Coolant is toxic and harmful to your health. Don't add tap water to the coolant system, right? So it gives you a lot of generic information. The next page goes into the coolant level inspection, which is great. Maybe that's what you're looking for. But the information that is on here is just very, very vague. Um, I feel like with bikes that I've had in the past, and especially with vehicles, if I'm going and reading about the coolant on the machine that I have, it's going to give me the recommended coolants to use, it's going to give me the amount of coolant the system will hold, and none of that information is in this book. Um, so that kind of goes back to the last point I made with the DIY tutorials, right? You have a good starting point here with this owner's manual, right? You can get some of that basic information, 
But if you are somebody and you want to go ahead and you want to flush the coolant system and you want to put fresh coolant in this bike, but you want to do it to the manufacturer's specifications, you might have a hard time doing it based on just the owner's manual alone. Um, you may have to refer to your local dealer and see if they can give you some additional information or hope that maybe you can jump on the internet and find somebody out there on a forum or a Facebook page or something that you can trust enough to believe what it is that they're saying. Um, and again, so that's just one thing. I've read through every page of this owner's manual. Um, and again, to me, at least, it just seems a little on the vague side. There is some good information on here, but there is just a lot of different items on here um, that just aren't in depth as much as I would like them to be. Um, I'm not thinking of any more specific examples as I'm kind of just scrolling through the book here. Um, there's also a lot of typos, right? So there, if you read through this, um, there are words that are spelled incorrectly. Um, there are words that are not used properly in sentences. Um, and obviously that could cause you to question the quality behind this owner's manual. I feel confident, I'm sure they did have some type of a legal review to ensure that the information in here was accurate. Um, but again, when I see something like typos or improperly used grammar in something as official as an owner's manual, it does cause me to ask questions. Um, this definitely not a deal breaker. Um, I think again, it's very helpful to have an owner's manual. I think that there is information in here that you will find helpful. Um, but I think it's just also something that the dealership's not gonna tell you. They're not gonna be like, oh, hey, by the way, the owner's manual is not going to give you everything that you need, right? They're not really going to talk about that. Nobody on the internet is going to throw this at you and tell you, and, and you're going to have to figure it out yourself. So here I am letting you know ahead of time. Don't expect a whole lot out of the owner's manual for this bike. Keep it, hang on to it, read it. I definitely encourage you to read it. You might learn a couple things, um, but don't expect it to be like the holy grail of information for this bike. All right, so I am about to go over the last thing that I don't feel like anybody is talking about when it comes to this bike. Uh, so obviously you can see I'm up, I'm moving around. We're gonna go to the bike this time and take a look. So the last thing on this bike that I wanna talk through is going to be the number one selling point of this bike, and that is the TFT display. Uh, and this is going to kind of be a twofer, not only the display, but also the CF Moto Ride app itself. So to me, dealerships and people online are using this display and the app as a big selling point to this bike. And don't get me wrong, the bike is, or I'm sorry, the, the display itself is beautiful. It is bright, it is colorful. Um, it's got so much information on it, you can't really hate it, right? But there are some things that I don't find perfect. Um, in fact, I think that there are some things that are a little glitchy or even inconvenient um, that may be not necessarily deal breakers, but something that just takes the value of this away a little bit. So. Uh, I'm gonna, I got my phone here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and navigate into the Ride app. And the first thing that I want to look through is going to be navigation. So when you open up this app, right, you have a bunch of different options. You can kind of click around and see different things. Uh, to go into navigation, you're going to click on this little search icon here, the little magnifying glass. Um, it's typically going to start up top with the uh, My Position indicating that's where you are and you want to go to whatever destination. Um, so the first thing to keep in mind for destinations, this is not as simple or as intuitive, I should say, as Google Maps or Waves or Apple Maps. For example, I can't just type in Home Depot or Best Buy or Target 
and get a list of those locations that are nearest to me. For example, if I just type in Target, right? So I'm in Wilmington, Delaware. When I look through here, right? Like, so I typed in Target, Target Field in Minnesota, Target in New York City. It does not give me a list of locations near me. So what that means is you will typically need to have the exact address of where you are or if I type in Target Wilmington. So now it comes up with some more specific options. Um, so there's, you know, a couple different options on here. But again, right, we have Wilmington, Delaware, Wilmington, North Carolina, Wilmington, Massachusetts. Um, so you would just need to be a little bit more confident that the location that you're entering, or I should say the location that you're selecting, is in fact the location that you're trying to go to. Um, now, however, if you type in um, an exact address, it will typically come up. Cool. So now I typed in an exact address. So cool, I located that. It's showing me a map here. It's estimating that it'll be 21 minutes and 56 seconds to get there. It's about 14 and a half miles. Um, so all of this information, you know, pretty consistent with what you'll see on other things. Now, if I hit start, this is going to pop up and it's going to tell me where to go, right? So in 220 feet, I need to take a right onto Richard Avenue. Great. That seems to be functioning well, right? However, let's take a look at the bike now. When we look at the bike itself, anybody see anything here? This is telling me that I need to turn right in 2,598 inches. To me, <laughs> I am not as confident with how far 2,600 inches is in comparison to 250 feet that I'm more familiar with on pretty much most other directional apps. Um, so obviously I'm sure this is some kind of a software or firmware issue. There's probably some type of an update that needs to come out. Um, I've clicked around on the bike and I have not been able to find a way to change this to match what is on the actual app itself. So as far as I've, only, I've seen, it's stuck on inches. Um, now, as you drive, if you have more distance, like you have something that's you know a mile and a half away, I believe it does indicate that in miles. As you get closer, it will then change it to inches. And I think I've seen as much as like, you know, 20,000 inches or something absurd like that. Um, so again, one of the big selling points on this bike is that it's got this app, right? This CF Moto Ride app. It's got navigation built in. You can have it right on your display on your bike. You don't have to mount your phone and use your phone for directions. In my opinion, you do. So that leads me to the second flaw that I've learned uh, with the navigation portion of the app in the bike. So before I had a phone mount on the bike here, I used to put my phone in my backpack. When my phone was in my backpack and I was using the navigation system, the Bluetooth between the bike and the app would consistently disconnect. Like the signal wasn't strong enough. So the display on my bike would change from the directions like that to please open CF Moto app for navigation. So I just went ahead and I closed the app and that's what popped up. So that's exactly what was happening. Even though the app was running on my phone, whether I had my screen locked or unlocked, it would continue to go back and forth between this screen and the directional screen so it was like the signal again as i mentioned just wasn't strong enough to continue sending from the app to the bike itself now once i changed or i should say once i added a phone mount to the front of the bike and then i tested the navigation now that the phone was consistently closer to the dash it stayed up the entire time. However, at least again, in my opinion, at that point, if my phone is here, I'm not gonna rely on the navigation from the CF Moto Ride app. I'm just gonna use the navigation that I prefer from my phone. Um, so, 
you know, take it with a grain of salt. You can feel how you want to feel about it, but I am just simply pointing out that the navigation built into this bike is a big selling point, especially at the dealerships. I just want everybody to know that that feature is not as rock solid as they probably want it to be right now. Now, some other things that I've seen within the dash here. So if we go into the settings, um, we can scroll down. Um, music is, is very similar, right? So if you're listening to music on your cell phone or any other device and you're connecting it via Bluetooth to the bike, um, I encountered the same issues with the music as I did with the navigation when the phone was in my backpack. Um, so the connection between the two would consistently disconnect. So what would happen is if I was on this screen, um, this screen would all of a sudden just kind of go blank like it is right now. The music would stop playing, it would cut in and out, so on and so forth. Um, so it was basically unusable in my opinion. So again, I kind of found myself just going back to using my phone. Um, so if we head back over into the settings here, um, the next thing I want to go through is the vehicle information. So if you come into the vehicle info and then go to info, this page right here is going to show you, sorry, I can't really get the camera in that close, but right now it reads coolant temperature, voltage for the battery, and estimated miles until the tank is empty on fuel. So with all of that being said right like if i right now for the temperature it's just it's not registering anything but if i turn the ignition on it'll start reading so it's reading 96 degrees fahrenheit 12 volts of battery um, and you'll see what happened there is it kicked me back to the home screen and that's exactly what i was going to go through here so for me right let's go ahead and fire up the bike for a minute If I'm trying to use this screen to monitor the temperature of my bike, the voltage of my battery, so on and so forth, I want to be able to stay on this screen and monitor those things very easily so that I can determine is my bike overheating, at what exact temperature are my fans kicking on, but exactly like you see here, every 30 seconds or so of being on that information screen the bike will automatically kick you back to this home screen so if you're trying to monitor your coolant or your battery level or anything like that you will consistently have to keep using the controls on the left handlebar to go back into the vehicle information screen to get that information pulled back up again um, I've seen and been told that this is not the case on other CF Moto bikes. So folks that have, you know, a 300 NK, for example, or a 300 SS, they apparently can come into this vehicle information page and leave it open and monitor this information. So similar to what I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if this is a software or a firmware update that needs to be done so that that doesn't happen. Um, but right now, to me, it is a little bit of an inconvenience. I am somebody that likes to be mindful of my coolant temperatures, especially when I'm riding on hot days. I want to ensure that my fans are kicking on when they're supposed to be. And there is not a way to make coolant temperature one of your quick settings. Well, coolant temperature is not currently an option to have displayed there. And in my opinion, I think that that would be awesome. Obviously you have a coolant gauge over here, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six bars. So once the bike is at um, operating temperature, I believe you're typically gonna be sitting in the third bar. When it gets to the fourth bar is when the fans will typically kick on. Um, and I'm not sure that I've ever seen the bike get to the fifth or sixth bar, which is good, right? The bike does seem sometimes to run a little bit on the warm sides. Um, I've, I've seen it right at or above 200 degrees. Obviously at 200 degrees, the, the fans are typically kicking on and lowering that temperature back down. But again, like, I just wish there was an option to see the number and what exact temperature my bike is at rather than just simply relying on this gauge. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to talk through here. But so 
that pretty much is the, is the last thing I'm going to say. As I mentioned, right, the, the CF Moto Ride app paired with the TFT display on this bike is one of the big, big, big selling points to anybody that talks about this bike and is trying to get you to buy it. And I can't disagree with them, right? I do think that this is one of the most beautiful displays you are going to get on a bike for $5,500 uh, US dollars. I don't think you can really beat the value that you're getting, but I also want you to know that the software, the firmware, the functionality of those two things is not quite where I would like to see it right now. Hopefully we will see some updates in the future. Um, but this reminds me of just right like when things require software and firmware updates to stay up to date and to stay functioning properly as new phones come out and people have Androids and Apples and whatever else, there could definitely be some problems down the road with compatibility and just functionality in general. Uh, we see that all the time with technology, right? Where something all of a sudden stops working or doesn't work as it's intended to. Um, and that's kind of, ha that happens with the changing of technology. When you look at something like a Ninja 400 or something that has an analog dash, you don't have those problems, right? So everybody kind of knocks on, on Kawasaki and hates on them for not changing their display over the last several years. But if you think about it, in my opinion, one of the reasons that they haven't changed that display is because it's tried and true at this point, right? It works, it does what it needs to do. It gives you the information that it needs to give you accurately and it does it for a long period of time. We don't know how long the displays are going to properly function on these bikes. All right guys, so I realized after the fact that my camera didn't continue recording uh, during the rant that I was having there. So who knows where my thoughts were going, um, but I was kind of wrapping things up. So at this point in the video, I've gone through the five things that I feel like the population of people who are interested in buying this bike, who is likely all of you who sat through and listened through this video, need to be aware of. I don't think that everything I mentioned here is a deal breaker, that's for sure. Some of them maybe seem very small and minute to you. Some may seem, you know, like a little bit more of an urgency and something that you need to be mindful of when making the decision to buy a new motorcycle. Um, so with all of that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Feel free to, uh, to subscribe to my channel. I'm very new to content creation and editing and all of that. And honestly, I'm not very good at it right now. Hopefully, I can get a little bit better in the future. But um, I really enjoy this bike, and I do want to continue making content and pumping it out onto YouTube just for people to watch, right? Maybe I can teach folks some things about the bike, um, maybe help make some people uh, make a decision whether they want to own this bike. Um, so I will continue to get some content out for the bike. Um, and to continue watching that content, if you want to subscribe to the channel, channel and set up notifications for when I post, feel free to drop some comments. Let me know where you're from. Let me know if you're interested in buying this bike. Let me know what some hesitations that you have are. Or more specifically, let me know what type of content you would like to see about the CF Moto 450 SS. That way I can try and set some time aside, put some content together, and get that out for all of you to watch. So, as I mentioned, I appreciate anybody who stuck around and watched this long-ass video, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Later, boys.